What is going on? We back. Motor Street Sports Talk. I told you guys it was going to come with a Detroit Lions wish list overall for positions and, and, and coaching. I'm going to just do offensive coordinator uh, tonight since uh, Jim Bob Cooter and the Lions mutually agreed to part ways. His contract was up, like I told you dudes yesterday. But happy new year. Happy 2019. We still working. Uh, we know last year, we guys know last year who was with us for the off season. we was the most active uh, page in the off season for uh, Lions uh, football talk. So we're going to continue to work and try to exceed what we did last year. We went from a couple hundred subscribers to the off, through the off season to June to a thousand. So we grew really, really fast last year. So anybody you know that's into Detroit Lions talk, tell them to come over here and invite them to Motor City Sports Talk. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon button. Now here we got six guys that I like to see. That's on my wish list personally. Um, and we'll talk about each and every one of them. Um, Freddie Kitchens is the first guy I want to talk about. Um, the Cleveland Browns could keep Greg Williams, which is probably going to keep uh, Kitchens as the offensive coordinator, or they could bring in another coach. Um, and probably he's probably going to be gone, except if, uh, unless that guy's a defensive coordinator. He wants to keep uh, Freddie Kitchens as the offensive coordinator, but done an amazing job with with uh you know Nick Chubbs and, and Baker Mayfield and Jarvis Landry, he called a really really great um he called a really great great uh you know second half of the season because at some point uh, Ty Haley and Hugh Jackson was fired on the same day, okay and I'm gonna do tomorrow I'm gonna do uh, a few guys that I do not absolutely want to be the Lions offensive coordinator so you won't want to miss those two videos the over. The overall wish list for Detroit Lions next year, and then overall, well, then the uh, the, the top guys I don't want as the uh, OC for the Lions. But uh, Kitchens proved to be a diamond in the rough, um, not known by a lot of a lot of people out there, but he did a hell of a job with Baker Mayfield, and they say uh, say he don't have no ties to Patricia, but he did work for Bill Parcells at one point. We know Parcells was. Um, was a mentor to Bill Belichick, okay? So, I like Kitchens. I like what he done. I watched a few Cleveland Brown games. Offensively, he made a, a system friendly enough for Baker Mayfield. And, you know, they did some things on, on, the, on, uh, on the fly. I believe he's able to install uh, a full system uh, over the offseason with Matthew Stafford. And, if you know, he can't get Stafford rolling, um, or any dudes can't get Stafford rolling, I'm pretty – I'm 100% sure – it's Matthew Stafford. I'm pretty, but I'm about 60% or 65% sure that Matthew Stafford's the problem anyway. But if one of these offensive coordinators can, you know, pick him up, then, you know, and really uh, play towards, you know, give him some more game and play towards his strengths. We've seen that happen with, uh, with Sean McVay and Jared Goff. So maybe it was the OC, but I, st I say 65% of the blame is still on Stafford. But uh other guy I really like a lot. It's probably one of the dudes that's on the top of my list is uh, Gary Kubiak. Um, he don't want to be a head coach no more. It's rumors that Mike Shanahan may come back to Denver and coach for John Elway. That's why they fired Vance Joseph, who's interviewing for the Bengals job. Um, Gary Kubiak, the reason I like Gary Kubiak is because Matthew Stafford is mobile enough to get out there on no quarterback bootlegs. Uh, I love his zone running scheme. They run with the Shanahans and Kubiak up in Denver. Remember, they had uh, Mike Anderson and and um, Terrell Davis and um, uh, Clinton Portis, you know, running great. Everybody that ran through that scheme, and I think Carryon Johnson has the vision, has the cutback ability to to run that scheme. And I love Gary Kubiak, an experienced play caller. Uh, his play calls have shown the work um, through the years um, uh, in, in professional football. He's able to make adjustments. You've seen Kyle Shanahan and Mike Shanahan. They made adjustments, and he cut from that same tree with Robert Griffin III. Um, so I really like Gary Kubiak because of his experience and his, and his ability to make changes and, and adapt to the quarterbacks. I think that whole Shanahan-Kubiak tree, um, I would love that to come to Detroit. I mean, I know he's not young and innovative, but he's still innovative, and he got experience. I don't think the Lions are really in position to take on inexperience. They did that with Joe Lombardi. They did that with Jim Bob Cooter. Okay, but I like Kubiak because he got experience calling plays just as Freddie Kitchen does from Cleveland. You know, that's my personal opinion. Okay, then you go up to Jed Fish. He he was an interim coach at UCLA. He's part of that 
um, Sean McVay as a special offensive assistant. Um, I think he brings some of that L.A. juice. You know, he's called plays before, I think, at UCLA. Um, he was even a part of the Michigan um, offense from 2015 and 16. And a lot of people speak highly of him and said that he was like one of the best things going for that offense. So he does have some experience. I think he's a long shot, but I think if you're looking for a guy that has some head coaching experience, that's a good offensive mind. People speak highly of him in the Michigan area. I'm not sure what people say of him in the UCLA area. I like Jeff Fish. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. Um, I like him a lot. You know, um, I like him as a dark horse here. And like I said, what he's on in L.A., what he's picked up in Michigan in college and the pros, he's coached a little bit of everywhere. Um, I think he's a hot name right now. I'm, I'm not sure he's at the top of my list, but he's on my list of guys I really, really like to be offensive coordinator. Now, you go in here to Cliff uh, Kingsbury. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. He got uh, left Texas Tech and he got put as the offensive coordinator um, for UCF, uh, USC, University of Southern Cal. And pretty much, they just ready ready to fire Clay Hilton over there. But he got a large buyout, so I think Kingsbury is basically the coach at waiting over there, being an offensive coordinator. And now he's getting interviewed for head coaching candidates in the NFL. Okay, you know he's getting interviewed for head coaching candidates over there. You know I'm not sure the Jets or some other teams are looking to pick him up, but you know if he don't get no head coaching candidates, I mean they can bring him to Detroit, right? I like him in Detroit. You know, he's an innovative play caller. He's supposed to be like the new Sean McVay. Understand that he called plays at Texas Tech. It will be a learning curve. Um, young and innovative, but still inexperienced on the pro level, I believe, in calling plays. But dude is a beast, okay? he done a great thing at Texas Tech. Um, very innovative. You know, if you can't get Lincoln Riley, then the next office of mine you want to get is Kingsbury. So Lincoln Riley just extended his pack with uh, Oklahoma. So he's staying there. A long term, he was another guy. If the Lions was really to have deep pockets, would have made the list. But you know, Kingsbury, you know, it's a Big Twelve. They know offense, they don't know defense. But I like him a lot. Okay, you know, if the Lions get a chance to get him, um, I like it. All right, then let's keep keep it rolling. Then I'll rank them all. Okay, I'm pretty sure I got an idea how I'm gonna rank these guys. How I'm speaking on them, but <clears throat> excuse me. Um, good to talk about uh. Stay at the bottom, okay? Stay at the bottom with the another Los Angeles uh, Ram guy, which is Shane Waldron. Uh, Waldron. Hopefully I said his name right. Um, you know, they say he's a young, bright offensive mind. Um, you know, you know, but he don't have experience calling plays beyond the high school level. Um, so, uh, you know, that's the problem with Shane Waldron. You know what I'm saying? Um, but at the same time, you know, if you believe in him, you believe in his innovative system, you know, Sean McVay, give him give him the tip of the hat and say, hey, that's the guy you want. They got, got they also got a, another high prospect, man. Uh, I don't know too much about which is Zach Taylor. Um, um, but they say Waldron has ties to Patricia, having served two stints with the Patriots, has a quality control and tight ends coach. So there's there's your little backstory to Patricia, okay. Not many of these dudes have back, you know, ties to Patricia, um, and, I, and I, I, mean, I just think they need to hire the best candidate, you know, obviously. But you know, Shane, you know, he he won one of the hottest offenses. That's why I put Jeff Fish on there as well too. He don't have the ability to call plays, pass, you know, not beyond the high school level, but he's learned a lot there. He's a hot name. Uh, obviously, we want some type of experience at least on the college level for Matthew Stafford. I mean, going to Shane Waterarm was basically be like going to, uh, you know, uh, Jim Bob Cooter and Joan Lombardi. But just because you went to the well twice and it wasn't that good, you never know. Might go there a year later or two years later and it might be ice cold. You know what I'm saying? It might be good. Water might be clean, purified, cleaned out. And um, just because you don't, you know, hit it in, in the one area don't mean you overlook it. Because if, Sean, if that was the case, um, Sean McVay... You know, when he got his shot, okay, because he was too young. He didn't have the experience. But, you know, you got to see interview some of these young and innovative guys and see what they actually got. And, um, you know, they might just blow you out the water. You might just have the next Sean McVay. You never know. If Patricia don't work out defensively or overall as a coach, then you can just have them as the coach and waiting and hire them. 
you know. I know you don't want to think that far back, but at the end of the day, Patricia technically should have been fired from the Lions if they used the same barometer they used for some of these minority or fucking black coaches. You all know what I'm saying? Like Steve Wilkes, you know what I'm saying? He t- inherited a shitty situation. Retired quarterback, uh, other coach, Bruce Arians didn't want no more because you know the franchise wasn't going nowhere. But you know it is what it is, okay? But that's just what the playing field we on. But Adam Gates is another guy I like. I think he tops my list, to be honest. Um, did a great job with Jay Cutler. You know, the best you can do with Jay Cutler. Even uh, Josh McDaniels can do ish with Jay Cutler, but he did the best he can. Um, did an excellent job with Josh McDonald in Chicago. Didn't get a fair shot in, my, in Miami because he inherited a whack quarterback in Ryan Tannehill, who was technically a receiver at Texas A&M, but they never had a juice in the NFL. Before he got there, they was putting him on the bench in the middle of games versus Buffalo. So at the end of the day, they didn't allow, they read up Tannehill, and um, basically Adam Gates was tied to a lame duck quarterback. But, you know, how I feel about uh, Adam Gates, I done done several videos on him. So I ain't got to continue to just keep going in on him. Now I've had to rank him on my wish list. Um, Adam Gates is obviously number one. Uh, Kubiak is number two. Kingsbury is number three. Freddie Kitchens is number four. Jet Fish is number five. And then Shane Warron is number six, okay? That's how I like it, man. But, you know, for my dark horse, I really like Freddie Kitchens and I like Kingsbury. I know Kingsbury going to be a long shot with him having an offensive coordinator position. I don't see him leaving at USC to go to the NFL for a coordinator position. I only can see him leaving as a head coach position. But if the Lions can get him, he interviewed well, I wouldn't mind putting him above everybody else because he's innovative, young, he's a hot shot. But Gase, Kubiak, um, and Kingsbury for me, but I really like Freddie Kitchens as my other, uh, my other dark horse. I Man, he done an amazing job with Baker Mayfield this year. Let me know if it's any other candidates you guys like. Tomorrow I'll be doing the guys I absolutely don't want as offensive coordinator for the Lions. That's be a name, uh, and I will explain that list tomorrow. Motor City Sports Talk. Don't forget we on Facebook, Twitter. Also you can reach out to me on Instagram or DM me on social media. Emails in the description. You want to make a donation? That link's there as well. Make sure to subscribe button, bell icon button. You won't miss another video.